Hi everybody, it's Julianne Lee from Adored Beast Apothecary and I am going to talk to you about a subject that I get extremely passionate about, um, have been in lots of trouble over uh, voicing my opinion, my beliefs, and I'm just going to try to give you my personal feeling on vaccines and from it and going out and researching lots of other stuff and lots of other people's opinions and and um, on your own, then hopefully you'll be able to come to an educational choice of what you want to do in regards to vaccines. So vaccines originated, I'm sure, out of pure positive love um, of trying to help animals not get diseases. But in veterinary medicine, it in, two, in, in the year 2000, it would, the American Veterinary Association actually stood forward and said that the uh, duration, the off, how often you're supposed to give vaccines are all based on historical precedents and no scientific research. Uh, some, su some studies have been done since then by Ron Schultz and Peter Phillips. And at the end of the day, uh, I want to tell you a little bit how I, how I see vaccines working and the, the reason that I don't support them in the way that they're given right now. So if you think of your body looking like a house or your dog's body looking like a house or your cat or your cow or your horse or your pig, if you lived with me, um, think of it looking like a house and think of your um, immune system or antibodies uh, in the attic of your house. And now think of uh, a virus looking like a lock and think of your antibodies looking like a key. So what happens is that you get those keys through, or those antibodies, through a few different ways. You, you, your dog either gets it through maternal antibodies by drinking its mother's milk, or slow immunity by wandering through dog parks and slowly building the immunity, or through getting a disease and fighting it off yourself for themselves and then saving the antibody, or through a vaccination. So there's lots of different ways that they can get it. But once it's there, it's there. It doesn't just disappear. And the, the problem with vaccinations is that if you think of a virus looking like a lock and your keys are upstairs in your attic, which are your antibodies, the virus comes to the front door of the house. It bashes in the front door of the house, comes into the house as, an, as the enemy. The first mode of response of the body to attack that enemy is to send out all the keys. So all the keys come out, each key tries the lock, the proper key fits, it destroys the lock, and then your Pac-Man macrophages, white cells come up, eat up all the debris, and you really don't even know, or you can't even see with your animal, that it's been attacked by a virus. That's a healthy immune system. They've had to modify vaccinations slightly different than a regular virus because if they didn't you'd actually come down or your animal would come down with the disease that they're actually giving. So if you think of it you can think of it coming in the side door or the back door so that it doesn't set off the state of alert in such a way that you come down with the disease. So it comes in the back door or the side door. Well your immune system and your animal's immune system is so smart that they go okay well we want to get this intruder right away, but it wound up getting into the middle of the house. How did it do that? Well, it did that. If it, if, it was an an, if it was an enemy that we would have had an antibody for, we would have killed it at the front door. So it doesn't even ask that section of the army to come out. That What it does then is the sergeants come out and they bring out the major army. They bring out the big guns to kill whatever it has come in to the middle of the house. What happens that then, though, is that they will not shut down until they kill something. So they will walk around with their guns blazing to kill everything that's in sight, thinking that it's an enemy. Things that they can be killing instead of they ignore basically the vaccine virus because it has actually 
has an antibody already. So what it does is it we have things in your animals that then called passive antigens. So your dog may have dust mites, flea saliva, uh, chicken protein, whatever, that are supposed to be passive in the body, not reactive. But if the body can't find something to kill, it will kill that passive antigen and save it as an antibody. Therefore, every single time your animal comes in contact with what they've killed, they will create a res an inflammatory response and to try to, to try to kill the enemy. So what that does is it kind of puts the body into a state of overload, of a chronic, of a chronic um, reactive mode of, of killing things. So autoimmune disease can happen where if the body starts to kill itself. So if there's, you know, there's talk about if there's things in the body that are, are not there at time of entry of the vaccine, then the body will start to um, react and kill, and they won't shut down till it kills something, kill part of your cells. So create autoimmunity. So when you look at this and you, and you understand how brilliant our immune system is, that's why autoimmune diseases are technically not curable because we know so little about the immunity because it's such a brilliant entity within itself in our own bodies that what we're doing by over vaccinating is we're constantly stimulating the body's reaction to something that it already has. So if we were built like that, we wouldn't create antibodies because we create antibodies because we get attacked by chicken pox or we, your dog gets parvo or it gets kennel cough and it creates an antibody to that so that it doesn't get it again. So by vaccinating and coming through that response, it's creating something so unnatural that the body, body's constant reaction is very, um, very unnatural. It's a very unnatural process and can be kind of looked at as putting it into such a state of alert that the only way to get it down is to give a steroid which puts a lid and suppresses the immune system. But once that immune system is suppressed, then it can't do the good things that immune systems are supposed to do, which is fight bacteria, hence why your dog has to then go on antibiotics after it's been on steroids or at the same time, and then the antibiotics go into the gut and they destroy the natural flora, which decreases the immunity more. It just becomes this really crazy vicious circle. So what I'm basically saying to you from this is that, that there is no reason to when, when people talk about science-based, the, the studies that are out there is that dogs, because the study was eight years, um, will tend to hold their antibodies for eight years. And there's really no reason to believe that that would be lifelong, but the study was eight years. You guys can all go online and do all the research you want, but at the end of the day, you have to look at a scale and weigh your odds. What are the odds of your dog and where you live getting a particular disease compared and that is treatable compared to getting a disease, an autoimmune disease or a chronic skin disease or cancer or, or Cushing's or Addison's or torn cruciate ligaments or anything that is, is a chronic lifelong problem. When you weigh those odds of do I vaccinate or do I take this chance on I'm pretty sure most of you are gonna go, I'm gonna take the chance of that possibility of them getting a disease that is actually treatable compared to getting a disease that's not. And you can always do antibody tests. Antibody tests are something where they draw some blood and they measure the antibodies. The problem with that is that everyone is so afraid of being sued that a lot of companies will not say that a small antibody is still an antibody and will measure a proper response if challenged. So you need to go to a veterinarian that has done lots of research on what does an antibody actually mean and make their own call on whether or not your dog is protected with, with a titer. And 
in our clinic, what we used to do, if there was a titer, which means if there was any antibodies, we felt that there would, was a proper response and we were really lucky over 20 years, we didn't get an animal ever that we didn't revaccinate and had <clears throat> even a low antibody wind up actually contacting a disease. So it's food for thought and the amount of cancer, the amount of skin disease, the amount of animals that are being euthanized for things that are incurable or, or suffer for, for years and years and years with chronic disease compared to the probability of your animal getting um, a disease after a year of age that is not going to be treatable, you're going to have to weigh the odds, do some more research and weigh the odds yourself. Chances are you're going to choose the, the, the smaller risk of, of having your animal live a really, really long, healthy life uh, without chronic disease. Thank you.